Well, hello everyone. Welcome to our EDUCAUSE 2020 presentation. Today, we're going to talk about digital transformation as an innovation platform of multidisciplinary experience learning. My name is Orlando Leon. I serve as the Vice President for IT and Chief Information Officer at Fresno State. And my name is Max Chai. I'm the Innovation Architect and Coordinator of Digital Transformation at Fresno State. And it's great to be here with you, Orlando, and it's all my pleasure to present with you on this topic. Thank you, Max. So today we're, we're hoping to just share through student stories, but also just kind of a, a back and forth dialogue between Max and myself, just an update about our Fresno State innovation journey, highlighting our students and the success that it helps support for their time here in college. Now, before we start in, into our, our dialogue together, we're gonna to show you a video to basically give you the student's perspective. Hi, my name is Katrina Covarubias, and I'm a media communication student here at Fresno State. I learned about DXI because I did a campus-wide competition called Project Ignite. Um, through that, I ended up meeting Max, who's the innovation architect here. And with that, it's just been a lot of fun. I write blogs, I write news releases, press releases, and I really just try to get the word out there that we're here and we're spreading, our, we're spreading innovation throughout our community. I started working with Max almost two years ago when I was still in my undergrad, and I still love working here every single day. One of my biggest accomplishments here is the development of Cal State Ready for College Alexa skill. It was a CUCU-wide collaboration. I implemented the Alexa skill to help prospective incoming students through the college application process. My name is Armai Sarkusian, and I'm a graduate student in the Computer Science Department. I'm currently working on the BlockSearch project, which is a blockchain-powered digital credential platform. I have been working with the full stack of Amazon Web Services, some of which include EC2, S3, DynamoDB, and Lambdas. Working at DXI has allowed me to enhance my software development skills and gain real-world experience, and also allowed me to work on new and upcoming technologies such as blockchain and cloud development, which are skills typically not taught in classrooms. My name is Eric Rodriguez. I am currently a senior at Fresno State, and I'm majoring in computer information systems. There's very little opportunities in the Central Valley for me to put my knowledge to use, and I've been able to provide a little bit of of my knowledge into the project, whether it's following certain protocols, you know, tailoring things so that they meet our goals. And not only that, I've learned a lot more on top of the knowledge I've already had about how uh, organization views security. My name is Alwyn Moore. I am a senior in computer engineering major. Hi, I'm Xin Hong Wan and I'm an international student. I'm from Taiwan and I'm studying uh, computer science. I'm a grad student and this is my first semester. I'm working on AI robotics projects which can interact with the students and help them to answer their questions. The technology I'm working with is AWS, IoT, ROS, and which can help us to create the robotic features. So the reason why I came to DX Hub and got, got me interested was um, just the aspect of learning as you go, like for example robotics, that's going to be a new wave that's coming in, in technology, everything's going to be automized and everything is going to be run through an AI or some type of stuff like that. That's why I came into this uh, program. I really hope that DXI is able to grow and expand. It's just been really rewarding for me and I know a lot of the people that I work with, they love coming to work every day, it's really fun and I learn something new every day. So I want other students to feel the same way. I want community members to feel the same way that I do. And if DXI is successful and it does expand, it would be great because we could bring opportunities to people that are not only here at Fresno State, but throughout our entire community. And we're back. Welcome back. All right, so Orlando, with this opportunity, actually I got one question for you. I've been wanting to ask for the long time. And so since you are the first CIO at Fresno State, right? I mean, I have been wondering that like, you have so much to do to start with. And why you why did you think innovation is so critical and so important for, for us? 
And you, you even take all the risk, right? If that's something new, nobody done it before at Fresno State. Uh, would you mind like kind of sharing like, you no, know, since we have this opportunity? Absolutely, Max. You know, when I, when I read your question and I thought about it a little bit more, what's interesting is I, I don't know if I ever thought of it as a risk to, to try to innovate, but reflecting, I can definitely see that absolutely, especially as first time CIO when I stepped in in 2015, it was the inaugural CIO and I was a first time CIO. I think as I, I, I'm reflecting back now, of course, hindsight is 2020. I really felt a responsibility that innovation is something that I wanted to bring and, and possibly because I'm a techie at heart and it's something that I think is so fun anyway. Now, I, I will say this, and I've, I've mentioned this in other dialogues before, it is so important to do the core aspects of IT, do it well and do it first. Otherwise, it's hard for the community to really trust in any other work, especially innovation work. So I, I think that's really my basic answer. I, I thought it was a responsibility for me to try to bring that to the campus. And we've talked about this too, Max, to, to do that because we wanted to build a culture of innovation and change that would be a positive benefit to the university community. And then that would spread to the, to the rest of the, the Fresno State area and the Central Valley in California. So it's a fun thing to do. Yes, sure, it's, it's risky, but it, it was a bunch of calculated risks. And I think four or five years later, it's been a great journey so far. Well, Max, let me, let me ask you uh, uh, perhaps a fun question. You've been at Fresno State more than 20 years now, and you've seen a lot happen. You've gone through, I think, three presidents. You've seen the whole Central Valley change from a place that had maybe no real freeways at some point in time to that had stoplights, and, and now the infrastructure is all in place. You're still here in higher ed. You're still here in Fresno. What, what is it that motivates you most and especially what motivates you most doing this type of work of innovation and supporting students. And first, I want to be honest. The reason I, I like this job, uh, many, I like the job title a lot, right? I mean, innovation architect. I mean, gosh, that's the only first one you created at Fresno State. And I did check at that time, I am the only one in Fresno or even in the Central Valley. So that was a huge uh, requisition and incentive. And for myself, R&D is actually not new to me. And I really enjoy creating new stuff. So uh, I recall I share with you like back to 1997 when I first started my job at library, I was actually converting all the dump terminals to web-based and I have to show people how to use browsers. And I, that's part of my career has been. And I was part of leading the uh, process of bringing the first learning management system on campus. At that time, it was Blackboard. Uh, so I just feel like mm, this is something I've been doing. This is the opportunity for me to create more impacts. Uh, with your vision and with the work we have been talking about, it's more like we're going to make this a huge impact. And we're going to involve students. We're going to involve community. And I really share, appreciate your vision. And I really, at that time, I just so determined I want to be part of this journey and with you, with the team, and with other colleagues. So, that's what bring me to this work and hopefully continue to create impacts and helping students and the community grow. Yeah, fun and challenging work. Well, let, let's get to a harder question, perhaps. Tell me a little bit about how you personally know whether this is really affecting change. What, what kind of evidence can you share that this innovation work first supports the multidisciplinary experiences that our students really need as they graduate and go to their jobs but also that they're supporting the general student success efforts that we have. Talk to me about evidence, please. Yeah, and I will start with some good numbers. And uh, so there are some like uh, a lot of work. For the last three years, I was like amazed like how much work uh, we have to, we have accomplished. Back to spring 2017, uh, if you recall, we started with one student, assistant and we had a one project to develop a mobile app for that for past two years we we have supported more than 45 student interns and both in projects and research 
and they are not included in the classwork we supported. And we involve students, not just in the STEM field. And we have a uh, student from graphic design background. We have student from business background. And it's more like multi-dimensional. Uh, and we put students working together uh, when they are able to contribute with different skill set. We collaborate. Uh, that's where like the multidisciplinary comes in, right? It's like uh, we did provide a lot of different learning experiences. And students keep coming. And actually right now, I think the good evidence how we have success in this program is students continue coming to us. They are asking to be part of our work. And I feel like that's, that's a huge incentive, all the, the work we done, right? To attract people from different areas try to join us. How do you think our work with in this area and how, do, how, how we support the students? Yeah, so appreciate your response on that, Max. And, and it is amazing to see that the, the students are the ones who are asking for more of this and our faculty as well. They are knowing that we are a resource for the university and they're looking for ways that they could get their students involved in, in tech in tangible and practical ways. I guess my one example I'll say, especially on the multi or interdisciplinary type of work, I, I look at the, the actual results. So looking at this list here, we've done projects, we've completed projects and we've hit those milestones that we wanted. That, that in itself is great because it's one thing to say, we're gonna work on a robotics project, we're gonna work on an AI project and and do perhaps the research work, but not have an end product. And in many of these cases, like the picture on the right, are students being highlighted in the news. And I think this one was at 4 a.m. Max, so that was a, a feat in itself, getting students out there at such an early morning hour, but having something to show for it, having it actually work, that's one thing. I look back at my own college days and how I didn't personally have these experiences where I would work with other college majors and, and how important that is. One of my first interviews, I, I was able to interview at JP Morgan in Manhattan, and it was kind of for a tech job, but when I got there, I was in a room of about maybe 60 other applicants for the, for the job. And one of the first things they made us do was basically a, a team exercise. And of course, not knowing anybody there, I was expected to work in a group of about five people and we were working on one project. And it was, of course, not even a technology project. It's, it's probably one of those spaghetti building things. I, I just don't remember those details anymore. But we were all asked to, to do a certain task together. And we played out and we assigned different roles to the, to the people on the team. But that just speaks to how much the world expects our students graduating to be able to be ready to come out and work across disciplines and across teams and specialties and maybe stepping into roles that we usually don't do. And I saw that very clearly as our teams of students worked together. So I'm very proud of that aspect. So Max, um, let's go to another question. What, um, what type of technology work, maybe speak to the different types of technology that we're exploring and, and does it make a difference in our students' lives exploring perhaps cutting edge technology versus other types of technology? And, and does it really matter? For this particular unit and this particular program, we are actually so intentionally focused on solution development and problem solving. And most of ever we are working on, so technology like you have been mentioned, right? To a degree, technology is the easy part. And we intentionally to challenge ourselves with those most recent, the latest technology and the best technology like AI. But because our intention is to help the student get a job, get a career, and learn their experience through the process. So we are involving the still in the way different from the traditional technology programs. We are actually encouraged students to join us and we focus on the impact and what problem we are solving and working like a team. We work on blockchain. So we were asked for a solution like digital badges. And we are talking about MOOC projects when students that they are taking like a class in different universities, for instance, how do they put their accomplishment together and get reward? 
and we, we figure blockchain is a good platform, right? People gonna trust, nobody gonna be able to alter the outcome. And, and they were extremely success. And, and the recent project we just received because people actually asking us to extend the platform outside of Fresno State. We are even looking at these for the, uh, the school unified right now. Speaking of multi in, in uh, disciplinary, we, our business uh, in terms, they are actually coordinating the project. Our marketing people, they are involving the customers, actually our uh, solution partners to understand their needs, their want. And part of this process, we have to educate them about the technology, right? How this could actually benefit them in the short term, in the long term. We have to explain about like the cost and the long-term uh, value of the solution we are building. We are excited and not just with the technology, and it's also how we are actually apply the technology to create benefits and long-term value, especially involving our students. And one good thing I also want to mention, we often talk about, right, it's like, uh, we are kind of double dipping in this kind of success. That was just one example. The process itself is actually helping our students learn collaboration, and uh, be creative, be innovative, but the outcome itself actually benefits all our students or even our community in the long term. So I see that's a win-win win-win situation, and and I just feel like this is a great opportunity. I wish I had when I was a student, and you know I get to touch all the technology, but I really struggled how to apply what I learned into the practical world. So that's why. I feel like uh, uh, we we are that's what we are heading to, and I think we we are having some success doing it. Yeah, I, I would totally agree, Max. When I was going through college, I it was hard to find a way to practically put into into really everyday life the things I was learning in the classroom, and and these were would be experiences that I would have personally longed for. You know, with technology required in in almost all of our jobs these days, and and you know even even the day to day jobs, but also of course the ones that require some some strategic thinking and and just strategy and longer term thinking. I think it's so important that our students are understanding things like artificial intelligence. Uh, you mentioned the the concept of blockchain, like connecting. Well, what what is this thing called a Bitcoin to what it can really do in the practical world? Or well, robotics, we're, we're all saying robotics are going to take over our jobs. Well, robotics may take over some jobs and automate some, but it will also some some data is out there right now that's going to create more jobs than it actually supplants. So that's interesting that. The, our, our graduates are going to want to know about robotics so that they can prepare themselves to get ready for that. So I really think it matters because there's really, I, I think it's great what they learn in the classroom, but be able to apply that and to have experiences that they wouldn't have otherwise is so important. I, I do want to highlight that Fresno State is also, uh, it's, it's a place where we're about social mobility and we're really proud of some of the accomplishments that we've been able to sustain over the past several years, helping students be able to go into um, uh, careers that would help them move up, let's say, in terms of being able to provide support and where they, many of them are in agriculture and they literally work in the farmlands and, and they do that day in and day out, but being able to find potentially other jobs now through education. And with the technology that they get to learn about here, this get, even accelerates their possibilities and career choices to greater heights. I would say at a state institution as well, um, sometimes resources are tough. And, and I would say this is also why this innovation work is so important because they get access to things that they may not otherwise at, at many state institutions. I'm really proud of what we built. And why else does it matter? I would say that we have a stat that, that we are really proud of. Approximately 80% of our students who graduate end up staying in the Central Valley and they become the future leaders of the world within the Central Valley, starting in the Central Valley. So as we are working through our projects here with innovation, they get to lead projects, they get to, to do things, they get to be in TV interviews, for example. And, and this is great because this is, again, giving them practical experience to, to get ready to be those future leaders of the Central Valley and beyond. Well, Max, let, let's 
take a, another couple as we're starting to wind down our, our kind of time together here. So I, I'm sure this is a question that we get asked a lot and I think our, our listeners today will, would love to hear, what does it really take to make this happen? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, actually, Orlando, I love to hear from you first. I mean, like you and Mike have been have this conversation, right? It's like we have the top down and bottom up approach. So why don't you go ahead share? Sure. Yeah, if you don't mind, and I can yeah, and then share from where I sit and how do I contribute? Absolutely. No, no problem at all. So I I think there's so many important aspects, and so your perspectives are going to be very important. From where I'm sitting, I think one thing is important is that we have we have the support from let's let's call it the top down and, and whether that's the CEO or the president or chancellor or the CIO, I think that is important because without that kind of support, it is it is going to be harder to get these initiatives with technology to be recognized, first of all, funded is another important thing, but also what to help people see why their value is there. So I think it is important. And, and what else will it take? It, it's gonna take really making sure, again, as I mentioned earlier, that we do the core IT things well because people won't recognize the innovation work going on if there are issues with meeting service level or we have trouble keeping services up and running efficiently and effectively. So first, what we need is make sure we do our normal jobs of, of IT, central IT support well. And then of course, and I'm not saying we wait until, but we, we make sure we do that so that our message and our work within innovation will be better heard and more noticed. I think we need really great students and, and I think we have wonderful students. What I think I really mean is having someone like you, Max, being able to identify and being able to get those opportunities to those students. We have a lot of bright students we just need to let them know that there are opportunities and help them realize that this is some great work that they can do. And, and of course, um, persistence is important. We know that this work takes time. So persistence and patience is going to be so important that we keep at it and, and we, we keep with the longer vision of this is where we're headed, uh, a culture of innovation and transformation. And it takes more than, more than a day and definitely more than a year to do. So, and then of course, I think having someone like you, Max, has been a really great benefit for the university. Someone who's motivated, of course, the hardworking, we won't, we won't talk about your hours, but just you're very engaged, you love working with the students, and, and you're savvy in a lot of ways with technology and beyond technology. And I think those are all very important factors in finding the right person to lead these types of efforts. Your turn, Max. So for me, it's actually a collective cultural effort. I mean, that's where I really learned uh, through this, this uh, few years. And this is a great experience I really learned from you, Orlando. It's like the culture, right? And when you're asking what take this to happen, it's people. We need a, a lot of people who are willing to be here with us. And the first thing I feel, I would say for me, is like what I appreciate, what I needed, and I got was great leadership. I mean, uh, like we need great leaders and, and, and with the vision in innovation. And they are really thinking about student. And we had it. I mean, just like when you kind of say, you know, let's bring an innovation team and let's have this hub of this social transformation. And when you uh, kind of relay the message from Dr. Kesho, the president, it's more like, let's do it. I mean, you know, we need to be bold. Right, and we have to think about what we our students don't have. So the support, the leadership from the top, and that's what I'm echoing what you just said. Right, it's like I don't know how you did it, but you are able to get the support from your colleague at that level. I'm kind of using this. It's like top down. I mean, I really see it. Industrial partnership. I think that's something we learned to do it, and and that was the hardest part. Right, I mean, we used to be customers, and most of higher ed. Uh, especially like state university you mentioned, we Fresno State, we often to be a, a customer or a client to Microsoft, to Google, to Amazon. But we kind of changing our approach. We started to establish the partnership with, we don't call them vendors anymore, right? We start to call them industrial partners. We share with them our vision, our purpose, and we, what we want to do this. 
and they are actually open to work with us and align with what we want and they support what we want because they know helping us is actually helping them. So it's kind of neutral benefit. And, and um, the campus community, right? I mean, I was really surprised. I was shocked. I mean, and I got five faculty, they want to work with us voluntarily. The last one I really thinking about is the student. As I shared in the beginning, I'm a product of Fresno State. And as a Fresno State student, we are really lacking this kind of opportunity like those uh, Ivy League students, right? We really need uh, opportunity to try something different. And we, we don't have resource for it. So when you first came to the idea, say, you know, let's get a resource for a student to try. They are dedicated. So in our internship, uh, we have two different kinds of internship. One is the project-based. They will get paid because we got a grant or we got a project. They also, they also do the research-based internship. They just want to here to learn and to build up their skill set and be part of this innovation. And right now we are actually having more research internship than uh, project-based internship. And I'm so proud, proud of these students, right? It's like they are here really for their future. And what makes this to happen is not about the resource, about you and me, it's about the student, they are willing to do it. And we have it. So that's why I keep motivating us. Like, you no, know, I think we are doing the right thing. It's our students, they really appreciate what we are doing and they really see the value of uh, what we are providing and they really want to be part of us. And that's why I'm all, often like excited about. Thank you, Max. As, as we wrap up, maybe, maybe a 30 second thought on what comes next, right? All this exciting work over the past several years, what comes next? And maybe my brief reply is that the industry partnerships it's really key and it's been great that Fresno State's been able to get some grant support and other aspects of recognition around uh, the nation. Really, we've been highlighting a few things and, and I think we should be really proud of that. But I think we continue this work. I think uh, artificial intelligence is gonna continue to be a really key theme, especially in supporting higher education and the decisions we make. We talk a lot about using data to make decisions. Let, let's do it and let's, let's help have our students help us to do this. A quick thought from you, Max. Yeah, and for me, I think we are at the moment of growing pain, just like any new startup business. And uh, we have so much, so many like quick win successes. And uh, I think the next stage is like for us to find a way to self-sustain and how to uh, maintain our success. And hopefully like this success is gonna these more bigger impacts. And to build more partnership, uh, to get more uh, resource extended our internship program and also uh, uh, just like uh, uh, hopefully like you know um, we are able to kind of like extend like you said you, you kind of comment on me I'm a dreamer I really see us to be the next Silicon Valley you know Fresno State we have people we have the resource and we have the leadership be, uh, visionaries like people like you and I feel we have the potential to be it. And that's actually what comes next is keep dreaming and hopefully have your support and hopefully we continue to get a buy-in from the campus and community to support our Fresno students for bigger success. So thank you very much, Max. Very good thoughts. This is our information. We would encourage you to reach out to us if you have other questions or if you want to continue the dialogue. It's been a pleasure to be with you. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your conference. Take care. Thank you.